Hello and welcome again to the 2012fad.com. My name is Charlie Bluehawk. I'll be your host this evening. And uh, tonight I'd like to chat to you about what happened December 2000. What I like to call it was the last chance. Last night we chatted about superwaves, superwaves in the ocean. Some people actually call them hyperwaves, literally rivers of water inside of our oceans, all of our oceans and seas, that will occasionally reach up out of the depths and swallow an entire cargo ship whole. Cruise ship almost was swallowed uh, things last year. Tonight I thought we would chat about the last chance the human race had to regain control of their world, our world. Without bloodshed, that is, without war, without, uh, without raising an army. I was there in Los Angeles and saw that one single moment come, go, and depart, and nobody cared. I saw it coming. Quite a few people saw it coming. For some reason, I was the only one who was yelling or screaming or begging or pleading. Let's do something. Let's do anything. Let's take back our country, the United States at that time. Let's stop this. There's, this is senseless. This is stupid. We outnumber them. Let's just say... No. Nobody did anything. As I said, a few people knew the truth as well as I did, but they didn't even try. They didn't even make an effort. They just sort of looked at me and smiled and said, well, you know what's happening, Charlie, as well as we do. Just, you know, it's too late. It was inevitable, and they knew it. And uh, they had resigned themselves to the coming horror. Again, this is something I, I just don't understand, but that's just me. Now, what still puzzles me to this day is why our masters, the elite, the Committee of 300, the Olympians, even though they know the brown dwarf star is coming, they know that the Earth is about to be spun like a billiard ball. They know that the wave from the South Pole is going to basically decimate all of us. They know that. And yet... They still want to torture us into a living nightmare, a living death, a, a daily torment of rape, murder, hatred, sickness, illness. And yet they fully are aware of the brown dwarf star. They've already made their arrangements. They've built their underground cities, at least for the, the elite among the elite. It's, good, it's going to be funny to watch uh, the faces, the looks on the, uh, on the traitors to the human race who, uh, who turn their backs on mankind uh, thinking that they would be saved by their masters and <laughs> discovered they've been left out outside with us up on the surface. I uh, always think of uh, Pine Gap in Australia and the people who have their ticket to, uh, to safety, to freedom, and the looks on their faces when they get there and the door is closed and they discover they've been betrayed like the rest of us have been. Well, what can you do about that? Anyway, I... Again, I'm still trying to figure out why our masters, the elite, the Committee of 300, knowing that the Earth is about to flip and begin a new life cycle, knowing that we're, for the most part, all going to be gone, why do they still hate us so much? Why do they fear us? Why, why do they want us in pain and in horror? Then I looked at their religion, and suddenly the population control bizarre things, the social engineering, turning women against men, black against white, all these phony staged wars over oil, oil which is a natural byproduct of the Earth herself. The Earth makes oil. It's not dinosaur bits. It all began to make sense. It, it makes sense in a very sick, disturbed way that all hatred makes sense. You see, our masters, the elite, they worship Satan. Whether you believe in such things or not, you know, really is not important at this point in time because they do. Now, they worship Satan in and of itself, you know, no big deal. Personally, I hug trees. So if you're a Satanist and you rape young girls, and usually it turns out to be family members, by the way, they're, uh, they're sort of non-denominational when it comes to who they torture and what horrors they visit upon people. So they rape their own young girls, get them pregnant, and then use the babies that are produced in uh, human sacrifices to their favorite god, you know, None of my business. It's a family matter at that point, as far as I'm concerned. For myself, uh, having grown up in, in the United States, uh, it was, again, something we knew about but never talked about. 
sort of like the ghosts and the, uh, well, long story. The human condition has this thing where we know something is true, but we don't talk about it. Therefore, we don't have to deal with it. Therefore, we don't have to, you know, come to grips with reality. For example, there are entire cities in the United States that are very openly controlled by Satan worshippers. The, the mayor, the, the city council, the sheriff, they're all Satan worshippers. This is well known, but never spoken about. It's places where you drive through just long enough, to, you stop long enough just to buy some gas, you keep an eye on your woman and your children, you get back in the car and you keep driving. You never stop. Particularly one place in mine is called Vacaville. It's in California. It's on, it's, it's a little desert town, and basically it's in the middle of nowhere. It's on this one highway, the uh, Interstate 15 between Los Angeles and Las Vegas, very heavily traveled. And you just never want to stay there for more than 15 minutes. You stop, you get gas, you, you buy a Coke, you leave. Uh, the number of stories I've heard from Vacaville and the damaged people I've met. I remember one woman, uh, she was a private investigator. She'd been sent to Vacaville looking for missing girls. And um, when she talked about it, uh, the look on her face, and she soon disappeared after telling me her story that, Yes, they uh, kidnap young girls, they rape them, they get them pregnant, they use their babies in human sacrifice, and of course they kill the young girls. This is well known. Nobody cares. Again, a mystery to me that I just don't fathom. Anyway, so we've got our masters, the elite, they worship Satan. That's neither here nor there. So if you're a Satan worshiper, you're really big into power, you want real power, so you go into crime. You're with the Mafia, the Vatican. You're with, religion is big power. Then you start wars. You know, these are all the major power bases. So now you've got control of the money. If you want to control a nation, you control their money. Then you don't even really care who the president is. What do you care? You've got them by the short hairs. You then cause nations to go to war against each other and loan money to both sides. That way you win either way. So now you're a Satan worshiper. So you need to get that extra bang for your buck. So, using your best black magic rituals, you cause this paper money that you're circulating, which is of course worthless, to the people you now own. So now, all your personal sins are transferred to your slaves, and you go to heaven, I suppose. Why a Satan worshiper would want to go to heaven is beyond me. So, just to make certain that there's plenty of suffering, all that money, that phony money you've given out, you take back. Now you're leaving people jobless, homeless, entire families living on the streets. After all, you know, you are a banker. There's this very smart fellow by the name of Tim Refat who talks about this. And you can hear his interviews on the Jeff Rents Show, which is at www.rents.com. Rents is R-E-N-S-E dot com. I highly recommend the Jeff Rents Show. You will learn more there in a few hours than you did in four years of college. So, now you worship Satan, you murder babies in his name, you eat them alive, you control the Western world, you're rich, you're powerful, you're feared, you're untouchable, now what? Well, obviously you want to become a god. whoop de doo So, what is the plan of the elite? That's really simple. In Satan worship, you sacrifice life. So their plan, before the event is to sacrifice all the life on the earth. And endless suffering and torment before the dr brown dwarf star wipes us out anyway. And all that pain and all that horror and all that suffering are very important, as I said, in black magic rituals. It's what powers their rituals, their beliefs. And they use us, the slaves, the cattle, as a sacrifice to Satan. Why? Oh. To call Satan back to earth so he can rule. Okay? So again... This is the mentality of the people you're dealing with. This. So, imagine trying to have a nice, polite, reasonable conversation with a Satan worshiper who happens to be your U.S. Senator, and you're talking to her about pollution or women's rights or feeding the homeless or giving people jobs. Knowing that after she's you know, done with you, she tries to be as polite as she can, you know, for a Satan worshiper. She's going to go home to have sex with any number of young, small children, boys and girls. She's then going to peel the skin off their still-living bodies, and then she's going to eat them. 
my guess is, is there's not much in the way of what I would call a meeting of the minds between us and someone who worships horror. See, our agenda, home, family, children, health, happiness, freedom, knowledge, love, joy, really is of no interest to our masters, the elite. You see, the elite live quite literally in a totally different world than you and I. Oh, I, I, I forgot to mention, their, their ultimate plan, after sacrificing all life on this planet to their god, Satan, and bringing him back to sit on the throne of Earth, their ultimate plan is then to throw down Satan, to throw down their god, and to take his place, to become gods. Again, I don't think there's a lot of meeting of the minds possible. I don't think there's any common dialogue we can have with these folks. I don't really think having a peace rally, handing out flowers, and singing Kumbaya is really going to impress these people. I just don't think there's anything we can do short of rising up and start cutting off their heads. By the way, the, the masters, our elite, still remember the French Revolution like it was yesterday, and they are truly terrified of us. I don't think anything we can do is going to make an impression on these people who eat human babies alive, but hey, you know, that's just me. Well... More of these and other fun thoughts next time. We here at the 2012fad.com have a plan to survive the event and uh, even maybe survive the elitist, too. Do you? Well, my name's Charlie Bluehawk for all of us here at the 2012fad.com, wishing you a really good day and reminding you to keep a good thought. <laughs>